What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Ectoplasm Show. My name is Josh Hurd, and joining me is my good pal, partner in crime, Mr. Jason Koopsik. What the fuck is happening? Been uh, playing with YouTube and a bunch of video stuff. I saw that. Did actually. you uh, watch my Paratuber video? I, I did. And do you think that I had an opportunity to make a video yet? No, no, no. You don't have to do it yet. I, not yet. I still want you to forget. I'm not going to forget. You did before. This isn't the first time I've called you out on a video. I tagged you. It's a very good point. It's a very good point. <laughs> God damn it. So, yeah. Um, I already heard from Shaggy and J-Lo and Huke, all three, oh, both the other two guys, and they're Jesus. all, they haven't made videos yet, but they're all going to oh. do it, so. All right. So you better. I'm going to. Okay. It's going to happen. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you know What's what? up? I gotta what? grab the toast, so we'll get a random whatever I turn to page toast today. Oh That's hell yeah, dude! Grab that shit. I got a big old glass of beer tonight. You're br you're drinking what? Big old glass of beer. Yeah, what kind of beer? This is from our this is from our pals over at uh, Big Rip. Yeah, which one is it? It's that brown. Oh, the sweet brown. See, br sweet brown. Yeah, I can't talk. So yeah. Okay, let's we'll see whatever this is. Uh, All right, let's do it. Not drunk is he who from the floor can rise again and drink some more. But <laughs> drunk is he who prostrate lies, and who can neither drink nor rise. Whoa! Cheers. Cheers. Love it. So we got some uh, calls and texts. Yes. And and I'll play the calls real quick. Like. Yeah, I want to hear these. Um. I need to put. This is how uh, how social or technologically advanced we are. I got to put an earbud in one ear so I can hear it when <laughs> Twitch hears it and everybody hears it. So. It goes. I don't know if Twitch will be able to hear this, but I think they will. I hope so. So. All right. Here's the first one. It's from, well, I'll just play it. It's a fan from Connecticut. Okay. Hey, guys. This is uh, Mr. Nagron. Um, time is it here. Uh, I'm up here in Connecticut, and it is currently quarter after nine, uh, Friday night. I came across you guys' this show. I think you guys are fantastic. The show is well put together. I watched your videos, the Longhorn and the UFO conspiracy one. Um, I think your work is just absolutely wonderful, on the right track. Um, I listen to Darkness Radio every night, and now I find myself listening to you guys uh, every night. Um, I start at the bottom, and I'm working all my way all the way up. Anyway. Um, I'm a truck driver um, out here in Connecticut. I do all of New England. I see the most coolest shit, random shit, scary shit, beautiful shit. I see it all. I got crazy stories for you guys. The best one of all is Black Eyed Grandpa. You guys really need to hear this story. It uh, actually featured it on uh, uh -oh. Darkness Radio last year around Halloween time uh, with Dave Schrader and uh, blew their minds out. Anyway, um, I'd love to... I had to cut it off. Um, he says he would love to talk to you, get, talk to us about it. I cut it off because the last part says his phone number, and I figured we wouldn't put it yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. And he gave us the best time to reach him, and he hopes to talk to us soon. And I believe he said his name was Mr. Negron. Okay. I'm... I'm, that's how it's spelled here on the readout, and that's what it sounded like to me. But thanks for the call. Glad you yeah, I really appreciate that. Enjoy man. our show. Yeah, thanks for checking out the videos too, man. That's great. Yeah, we'll be in touch. I want to hear this story about Black Eyed Grandpa. Damn, Skippy. So, all right, do we get another call? Yes, we do. We have a couple others here. Let me. Uh, I don't know if I've listened to this one. Oh yeah, I think I have. So here he goes. It's science, bitches. 
<laughs> or maybe, yo, it's science, bitches. <laughs> you know what? That's what y'all should do. Y'all should have like a contest where you get different people to call in and give their best in science bitches phone call. That's Just a sexy. great idea. That would be sexy. And, and good sauce. Sexy good sauce. There you go, Josh. <laughs> sexy good sauce. Fuck yes. He's out, homies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shaggy put the... Put it out there. Everybody call and give us your best It's Science Bitches. Oh, that's awesome. That is freaking so awesome. So, Shaggy also, um, he called a c- couple times. He's not drunk anymore. I told him to drink more. You're lying. You're drunk. You're lying. <laughs> drunk ghost story. Does anybody have any stories? Nothing? I haven't <laughs> seen any ghosts. I'm still looking. You, tell the story. Quick. Never check it. <laughs> we don't have any stories. We've just been drinking, so that's all we have. Thanks for calling. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so he calls back a couple more times because uh, there's a three minute limit on this on the voicemail. So if you talk over three minutes, he's gonna cut you off, and I I never let anybody know that before because most people don't hit the three minute mark. Sure. So here we go. It's a long one, but it's a drunk story from Shaggy. Perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. Look, I'm trying to leave another message this time. We actually tell a story. I'll try to make it brief, but we were at Roy's place slash Monster's House, where we're going to be on October 8th, which is next Saturday, I believe. It, there, yeah, it was, it was in the afternoon, and we'd been there several times before and several times after. We'd been there at night, and nothing nothing seems, I mean, we, we get stuff, but it's not like live and direct. But this particular day in question, we were uneasy from the moment we walked in and there was just something different about it and this whole this whole event took about 15 minutes I guess right what do you say about 15 minutes we start to finish give or take so we get in there like I say you know we we felt uneasy we made our way up to the second story a a few other things happened I think we, we caught a interesting photo there was another fly-by thing that, that went in front of J-Lo's camera that went by so fast you could only get like two frames of it. And then his camera died shortly after that. And me, it was four of us there, me, J-Lo, Monster, and G-Money. And Monster and G were back in the other room. Me and J-Lo had... You know what I just realized? Huh. We're supposed to be saving this for the drunk show, so I stopped it. <laughs> it's uh, It was only uh, not even halfway done, so I decided, I just sat here and I was like, shit, we're supposed to save this, so. Nah, that's awesome. Um, but he did call before, so uh, one more call from Shaggy from a, wa- a little bit ago. Okay. Sasquatch Juggernaut. God damn it, Josh. I got to stop listening to y'all's podcast while I'm driving. I'm going to have a wreck. Nasty. Oh, my God. That story was hilarious. Y'all are killing me. Good stuff. Glad to see the the team's back. I expect more jizz-tastic stories. All right, gentlemen. Peace. (laughs) So we also got a text. Saying, uh, oh, but, Shaggy text saying it's science, bitches. Um, now, now, can you change your? Uh, are we done with the? Uh, yeah, are we the, yeah. The, sorry, turn that. No, back you're down. fine. How's that? Better? It's just really distorted. Yeah, better. Yeah, sexy even. All right. Um, they. Uh, we got a text from somebody that's local to Kansas City because the number, but they didn't say who it nice. was. Oh, says, okay. I just wanted right. to say I enjoy the show and would love to hear more EVPs. Oh, sweet. I think we could do that. Yeah, we could probably work work on that some in the future at least. Absolutely. If we don't get them on the show, maybe we could get them into videos or stuff like that. 
We could do a whole fucking EVP show. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. we got that, and we got. Um, I also texted Shaggy a little bit last night. Did you? Um, oh, I asked him what he was drinking, but I'll save that for the show, the drunk show too. So. Dude. So you guys got a little bit of a teaser of uh, <laughs> the drunk Shaggy episode. Shaggy Daniel Dunn. Hell drunk. yeah. So, and I tell you what, if you guys want to reach out to us, do it. Uh, 913-730-7255. You can text us, uh, leave a voicemail. I think it, you said what, three-minute limit before it like, cuts you Three-minute limit, and yeah. if you need more time, you can always call back. Hell yeah. Perfect, perfect. So, so yeah. I want to tell everybody that I just, um, just started on YouTube videos for Ectoplasm Show. Everybody needs to go subscribe because we're going to have different... Not only can you watch our Twitch feeds on there now after or the day that they go live on the podcast stream, if you want to watch the show, you can do that. But you can also check out some other videos we got. And I just tagged a bunch of people in a new video I posted last night. So... Yeah. Good stuff, buddy. Oh. And we still want, we don't want more drunk calls. So, right? We need them. We need them. Yeah. So, did you find anything like fun in the news? I found actually all but one of my stories are calling out hoaxes, pretty much. No shit. Yeah. Let me, uh, okay, I have a question for you, my friend, because I found a story. Um, actually, this was actually emailed to me earlier from a friend of mine, and she emailed this to me, but I don't remember if it was like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It was fairly recently, though, that we, we did a story, um, something about some town, and a lot of people like dressing up as clowns. Yeah. Okay, do you remember the name of that fucking town? Well, I, it's a nationwide thing now. Oh, okay, but, okay. Well, it's not... So, they had one here in, in Kansas City Metro. Did they? Yeah. Well, check this out. This is out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, okay? Um, man dressed as a clown was shot on the city's south side midday on Friday. I did not For- see that one. <laughs> This is fucked up, man. Uh, Fort Wayne police were called just after 12.30 p.m. on Friday to an ad- uh, address near Standish Street. Um, report of a shooting. When police arrived, they found a man down on the sidewalk, critical condition. Fort Wayne Police Department spokesman Michael Joyner said that a white-colored SUV pulled up alongside of this clown, this man dressed as a clown. A man was driving... Joiner said the man got out of the car, fired several shots. The man then got back into the SUV and headed north. Um, he says, this isn't the first shooting that's happened on this street. They happen often down the street. Um, and then uh, Joiner also goes on to say, I think it's crazy. People better take those clown masks off before the coroner does. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, crazy stuff, man. So mine actually, my, what my first story actually has to do with this as well. Oh, does it really? The clown shit? Yeah. Just to say, uh, I'm sharing this on our social medias. But uh, cops yes. catch creepy clown in Kentucky. They caught one. Yes. Fuck, man. This comes what? from the BBC and Coast to Coast. You know, speaking okay. of Coast to Coast, I was when I was yeah. on there, they um, they had. A story about the Van Meter Visitor Festival on there. Fuck to the yeah, buddy. Which we had fun at. Yes, we did. Anyways, always a good Sharon. So I'll get into the story now. Okay. The great creepy clown panic of 2016 may have hit its crescendo as police in Kentucky have managed to arrest a man allegedly in the midst of frightening his apartment complex or an apartment complex. Wow. The incident happened in the city of Middlesboro early Friday morning when cops say they spotted the clown lurking in a wooded area near the homes. 
According to the arresting officer, the now hunted Harlequin attempted to escape the scene, but police successfully stopped him and took him into custody. They had a picture oh. of him. He looked a lot like a Slipknot member. Um, anyways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Upon Good. being unmasked, the clown was revealed to be a 20-year-old man named Jonathan Martin who looks far less menacing without the disguise. I'm sure. He now faces charges of disorderly conduct and wearing a mask in public places as well as forever being known as the creepy clown who got caught. <laughs> and while Martin is due in court, uh, kudos should be given to the grote- or the courageous cop who found himself forced to chase down a phantom clown and got the job done. Wow. It uh, says, coming at the end of the fourth week of panic sweeping the South, the arrest should dissuade other aspiring creepy clowns from picking up the hobby and hopefully send the haunting Harlequins back into our collective unconscious. So one thing that I've thought about this overall yeah is that I think there's two things behind this boredom I don't well I don't think there's anything like I don't think there's <laughs> spectral or or anything like that I think that oh, oh. um even though the production company for the new it movie claims that they don't have anything to do with it that doesn't you think they that might market, be behind it? That doesn't mean that a marketing team wasn't to start it. Sure. And then just people decided, dude, that sounds fun, and decided to start it on their own. I'm sh- I wouldn't be surprised if maybe one or two of the first ones were marketing for the upcoming movie, and then it just picked up and people started doing it. So, If I have a terrifying encounter with a clown, though, I'm definitely not going to want to go see your fucking movie. <laughs> Just gonna say, um, just gonna throw it out there, huh? You have a fan on Twitch. What's that now? Uh, you have a fan on Twitch. Says uh, Josh is so hot. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Who who said that? R R. R R. Rick Rose. Oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, buddy. So yeah, what, what do you think? Do you think I'm right about that on the clowns? I could easily see it. Um, stranger shit has definitely happened. That's for sure. Why do you think Josh is hotter than I am, Rick? Oh, well. Yeah. Inquiring <laughs> minds want to know. So, yeah. So, that was my first story, too. I love it, man. My second story is, uh, so, you know what, what I finally did? <laughs> I tracked down Brian and I got to ask him a question. He's come again. No. <laughs> come again. Um All right. Oh, they said they can't see me. Damn it, Brian. There. That's better. Anyways. Winged humanoid revealed to be a hoax. Oh my. Where was this at? This was in Skywatch News or Sky News. Skywatch TV or something like that. But okay. it's that story we had a few weeks ago about the little creature in the jar that Brian was yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Brian was wrong. Brian fucked up. So the alleged wing humanoid discovered in Mexico, which made headlines earlier in the summer, has been revealed to be a hoax. God damn it, Brian. In an interview with Skywatch TV over the weekend, author and researcher L.A. Merzuli detailed how his team managed to bring the specimen from Mexico to the United States for further testing by veterinarians. During this testing, he said, the humanoid underwent extensive testing by the experts where, initially, everybody in the room at this point believes the creature is real. However, two hours after the entity had been removed from the liquid solution that once contained it, the creature began to dry up and shrink. At this point, or it is at this point, Mazzoli said, we began to see things that shouldn't be there as the skin of the creature began to evaporate. Specifically, he spotted a puzzling piece of the creature that featured an anomalous blue substance in it. 
Asking the veterinarian what the object was, he replied, that looks like a matchstick or a toothpick, and that's glue on the end of it. Fuck. Stunned Merzoli looked closer at the creature and saw more of the blue material on the arm of the entity. At this point, the realization hit him that the winged humanoid was, in fact, a hoax. Further x-rays of the specimen with these new insights in mind revealed additional aspects of the creature which confirmed that it had been fabricated. He conceded that the researchers were dismayed to learn that the tantalizing creature and the fantastic backstory behind it were all part of an elaborately staged ruse. To his his credit, Marzulli apologized to anyone who had been taken in by the story and noted that it was the first time that his group had been forced to offer a retraction about their research. Uh, Ah, I see. He expressed regret over going public with the creature before it had been fully vetted, but noted that his initial release was the information included the caveat that additional testing was needed. According to Mazzuli, he had the faux creature examined by a zoologist who managed to identify in some parts of the entity as pieces of different animals, such as a bat and squirrel. So... The news came out. The story we read before that you found? Yeah. Had to have come out before two hours after they took it out of the jar. I mean, it, if they if they knew two hours That's after they true. took it out of the jar yeah. that what it was f- fake, how did that story get out there to begin with? Sons of bitches. So I don't know, I, man. I don't, I don't know either. It's suspicious. All the... I, it, all the right, at, least all the this is, at least they're saying this is a hoax, but it's suspicious to begin with that the story got out there and we talked about it and it's just now coming out as a hoax when they knew two weeks later, two hours later that it was fake. Motherfuckers. Anyways. I don't get it, man. I don't know. Sons of bitches, though. <sighs> I found a story that scared me. Mm-hmm. I did. All right. <sighs> That's not hard to do, though. I no, I don't even want to fucking read this. God. On. It says, quote, If you knew what we do, you will never sleep again. That is a quote from a NASA director, Paul uh-huh. Hertz, director of astrophysics division of the uh, NASA. Um, he shared this statement at... I M G U R. You know what that uh, reference is? I N G U R. I M G U R. Oh, that's a web. I don't know. Isn't that a website that you just post pictures on? I don't know. No, this actually looks like it may have been like a conference of some sort. Oh. So anyway, the uh, the article goes on to say this. It says, we are never going to discover aliens. Aliens are going to discover us, and when they do, it won't be pretty. You can take that to the bank. There certainly won't be enough time to, uh, for press conferences. Uh, you probably won't even have time to blink. Here's a quote, then, from this Paul Hertz guy. He says, quote, be careful what you wish for. If you guys knew every f- or even a fraction of the shit that we do, you will never sleep again. I promise you that. Uh, Paul Hertz was named the director of astrophysics division in the science mission uh, directorate at NASA in March of 2012. He is responsible for the agency's research programs and missions necessary to discover how the universe works, explore how the universe began and developed into its present form and obviously search for other Earth-like planets. So, that's pretty fucked, man. For him to, like, come out and say that, that just, right there, that right there just adds to my whole thought process. Yeah. There's no such thing as, like, E.T., there's no such thing as like Alf, these lovable little motherfuckers that you know you give a he fucking. He can't hugs. possibly know that. I I I think he may. I think he may. Uh, I think they maybe, may or maybe. may not have found some form of 
other race, civilization, somewhere out there, and they're just like, what, what the fuck? Mr. Rose says, I don't Josh know. was that kid who was afraid to read Goosebumps series, wasn't he? I fucking devoured the Goosebumps series. I loved that shit. I also, do you guys remember, oh my god, do you guys remember the, uh, the scary stories you tell in the dark series of mm-hmm. books? Yeah. Oh my god. I ate that shit up too. That was good. I don't know. I mean, according to the Flat Earth guy, we can't trust a single thing that comes out of NASA. Which I don't know if I trusted anything that came out of NASA to begin with, honestly. I mean... Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not that I don't trust it necessarily. It's just... That you don't trust him. I just... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they should if they should be trusted or not. I don't know, man. It's uh, It seems like there may be some form of agenda that we're not quite seeing and i that goes for every fucking agency period okay yeah i don't give a fuck who you are or what you stand for or whatever like there's something going on there i don't trust a fucking single entity out there don't give a shit you don't like entities <laughs> you know exactly what i mean like, uh and- Somebody on Twitch said they saw something behind you. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck around. It was Rick. I just didn't. <laughs> There's something behind Josh. <laughs> okay, so uh, 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 another story here because we are going to have Rick on here in a minute. So Yeah, 10, 9, 8 minutes, something like that, yeah. Company claims to be behind hoaxed hauntings. What? This comes from Week in Weird. In stunning, in a stunning revelation likely to scare... I'm reading their story, so... In a stunning yeah. revelation likely to scare the most hardened of ghost hunters, a special effects company claims to have created numerous hoaxed hauntings at legendary locations. Predominantly, Please don't make the location. They don't. Fuck! Predominantly the... Because then they wouldn't get paid to do it anymore. Predominantly, the creators of elaborate effects at theatrical haunted houses, Kentucky Special FX, told the Weekend Weird that they have also been consider they have also had considerable business creating hoaxed events for clients. Owner of the company Mike Beach claims that the group Beach. has been tasked with fabricating ghostly activity for both companies and individuals on over 20 different occasions. According to Beach, they have actually developed a way to replicate the eerie activity reported by ghost hunters over the years, such as sudden temperature changes and equipment failure without being detected as the ones responsible. The group even uses embedded ghost hunters to help further the illusion and trick unsuspecting individuals into thinking that they are having a paranormal experience. So I'm guessing they're doing it at places that are like guided investigation places. Sure. Um, Based on their past success, Beach boasted to the website, we don't get caught ever. As one might expect, the disclosure that there is special effects company creating activity for purportedly haunted sites has been met with considerable dismay from the ghost hunting community those who partake in the activity lament that a science or a significant amount of time and resources go into an investigation making the news about these hoaxes particularly disheartening the owners of quote real haunted houses argue that the company does a great disservice to sites that they try to provide a legitimate location to research study Beach, however sees it his work as a way of critiquing what he sees as a lack of effort from paranormal researchers and ghost hunters. His argument is that quality ghost hunters would be able to spot the hoax, although appears not to have happened yet. That's the issue. It's likely that we'll never know exactly where and for whom the company has hoaxed a haunting, but it's a safe bet that the explosive revelations about the practice will have ghost hunters second guessing their evidence from some time to come now i don't think that they're they're doing it at like individual locations 
that you most groups will just book an investigation at. This probably more places like maybe Waverly. I'm not. I I don't want to call them out because I don't think that it was them. I was just giving that as an example. Big places like that. Well, you also have Bobby Mackey's right there too. Yeah. I mean, you have different places like that. If we're just gonna, I would throw say shit it's a place like that that would have a big group of people there. Some people you might not know because they say they're using some staged individuals as well. Fuck. Um, and who knows? They may be just wanting to get attention for their company, but. But that also lends itself to yeah, just um, be more thorough as an investigator. You know what I'm saying? Don't take every fucking mouse fart at face value and hear the mouse fart and be like, oh my God, it's a fucking demon, you guys. Did you hear it? It was a demon. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Like, just be more thorough. But fuck, man. That is ridiculous. You got any more stories? No. I'm right. still fucking hung up on that. Like, if I were to be the one to find that, the faking, and then debunk that shit, I would rip that fucking location to shreds mm -hmm. verbally. And got, on every social media outlet I could possibly fucking find. Um, I got one more story, and we're just kind of blowing through them because we're going to have Rick on here. But I'm yeah. not going to read the whole story, but basically... Uh, new artificial intelligence is natural or is a natural at killing humans. <laughs> Robots are getting scarier and scarier every day. It was only a matter of a time. Yeah. Already Chinese police forces have begun testing weaponized police bots and the U.S. Marine Corps has several machine gun wielding robots in prototype and R&D stages. While most of these robots can only respond to pre-programmed commands and must be controlled by a human, advances in artificial intelligence might enable these weapon-wielding robots to build acting or begin acting autonomously, even if that means using weapons on humans. Just this week, an announcement by two computer science students at Carnegie Mellon University has made science fiction vision, visions of deadly robots a little closer to reality. According to a press release, computer science students have developed an artificial intelligence system that has outperformed both hum humans and in-game AI at killing other players in Doom. <laughs> Doom. So, yeah, I mean... What I a great see, game. I can see Terminator happening. That'd be sweet. Still a call, no? <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you think uh, robots scare you robots don't really scare me not no. really no not really it's just fucking aliens man that was it you know what I mean where's our buddy is, he our, is our buddy coming in I think so Ricky what is up What's up? Oops. Yep. I got to close that one. Close which one? There's I, your sexy I ass. I got him on there. So, what are you doing, sir? What are you drinking, Rick? <sighs> Some high-quality Mountain Dew. Fuck yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. I didn't know I was going to be live. I could have put a shirt on. <laughs> Got a shirt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. What do you mean you didn't know it was going to be live? You were just watching us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I just won't stand up, okay? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Dude, I'm actually I'm fucking excited. We're going to hang out here in just like a week and a half. Yeah, October 15th at Uniontown, Pennsylvania for the Brush With Two Evil screening. Yes. Yes. <sighs> it's only Super like a couple hours from my place, so. Is it really? Yeah. Fucking perfect. Nice. That's fucking perfect. Mikey Trooper says, what's up? Say, what up? Good shit. So yeah, are you excited for next weekend, Rick? Oh, God. No. <laughs> I'm kind of oh. stoked. <laughs> next weekend's going to hurt. Do you know <laughs> what's... Um, do you know... 
so far what people are going to see? Uh, they are going to see me getting waxed live. Right. Yeah, but do you know what parts? Um, right now it's the the chest, back, one arm, and one leg. Don't forget, don't forget the taint, though. <laughs> I, yeah, some people are trying to get me to do that, but I was like, no, it's going to be live on freaking Facebook and Periscope. <laughs> you don't really want to see my taint on Periscope, so. So, um, do you want to tell everybody how they can donate to your demise? Oh my god, you're gonna, you're gonna I gotta find, it's like... I have it right here, actually. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> see, look at this, you're setting me up. Right. <laughs> right. Got all the, six, now. the email address to PayPal, donate a dollar, donate whatever, 6 S E N S E I N D Y at Gmail dot com. For every one hundred dollars raised, one part of Rick will be waxed. And tell everybody what that money goes to. The money is actually going to a food pantry uh, right across the street from Rhodes Hotel. So I'm putting myself through pain so somebody can have a Thanksgiving dinner. Damn, Skippy. And you'll be uh, everybody can watch too. You don't have to be there to watch it. No, you can watch it on my Facebook and Periscope. If you friend Richard Rose or you look up Paranormal KCMO on Periscope, it will be on there. You will hear me screaming random celebrity names like the 40 year Virgin. <laughs> ah, Kelly Claxon. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to hurt. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm no. looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Man. Now is, what uh, a gift for opening my mouth. Is Jay going to have anything waxed? Um, No. We, we come up with a plan that Anything raised over six hundred dollars would go back to the Warrior Humanity Project. Oh, so, cool! That's cool. We're doing it that way, so people can still donate if they want to for a good another good cause. Yeah, get into that a little bit, brother. Tell tell everybody what you're up to with this. The uh, w- I started with this plan, and it, it it all starts around ramblings of a maniac podcast. Everything starts there. Like the waxing started there. Um, I was talking to Eric Ensbrenner, and we were actually coming up with ways to help veterans out. And that's when he said, uh, "He said, well, you don't you don't have a job. You're going to college. Why don't you go homeless with them?" And it kind of just started there. And um, I had thought about ways of doing it and all this stuff. And I was actually at um, Silicon and Mattoon, Illinois, and I ran into Santiago Cirillo from The Walking Dead, season four. Uh, he was one of the guys that was killed off that season. And he was a veteran, and we got to talk, and I was wearing my Project 22 shirt, and he was talking about his movie, A Veteran's Homecoming, that he's doing, and that's when I brought up the whole Warrior Humanity Project. I told him, hey, this is my idea for a documentary. I'm going to go homeless for 45 days. I'm going to live on the streets and go cross country, meeting up with different veterans. And that's when his eyes got as big as golf balls. And he said, do it. I got your back. We'll get you sponsored and all this stuff. So it kind of just took off from there. I made a post on Facebook and now we're, I'm getting ready to launch a online auction. So we're going to be raffling off overnight stays at like uh, the Rhodes hotel uh, Collingwood Arts Center here in Toledo. We got a whole bunch of signed stuff coming through. Um, Christopher St. Booth said he was going to donate to it. Um, I know somebody else is talking to John Tenney about some of his stuff. And I just recently, like within the last 30 minutes, spoke to uh, Caleb Reynolds. He's from Reality TV. He was on Big Brother and Survivor. And he's jumping on board with me. Nice. So, we got grunt style and nine line apparel behind us. Um, just all kinds of people. Just, we're talking to Mercedes Benz, Walmart, Nestle Quick, um, Camping World Trucks. So we're just, <laughs> it's spreading like wildfire. I mean, I even know for a fact that the Iowa senator um, was briefed on this, so she knows about it. Shit, um, awesome. So there's a lot. It's just it's spreading. I've been contacted by 13 ABC. I got to get a hold of them. They want me to come on air and talk about it. Um, just it just kind of took off right before my own eyes. So that's badass. Dude. So uh, one of your fans, Samantha, came on and uh, said she got through to Twitch from you sharing us uh, 
on Facebook just now. Oh, fuck yes. That. And there's that's something else I need to bring up. Thank God she came in here to remind me. Uh, <laughs> so we, we're accepting donations for this project. Uh, you can go straight to my, my website, richardrosefilms.com. Um, and if you really want to, the Brush with Evil 2 stuff's on there too. But uh, uh, I never heard of that movie. But I, I guess it's, it's, yeah. I don't I heard the guy like sucked a dick or something. I don't know. I, he could be an asshole at times. I, mean, I guarantee it. I guarantee <laughs> it. <laughs> But, yeah, there's a donation section on there for that. But if you don't want to give straight cash to me, um, which I've already received four pretty hefty donations through that website, um, cool. you can you can go through Samantha Walker. She's a Sensi consultant, and she is actually running a special right now where all of her commissions for certain items will be going straight back to the Warrior Humanity Project. That's freaking sweet. Man. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and then 31 Project... Uh, Jenny Davis is also doing the same thing for her camouflage stuff. All the commissions are coming back to me. Wow. Um, Denise Mendenhall, I don't know if you know who she is, Josh. She's from the Iowa area. Okay. But, uh, she uh, she runs Relax the Bath up there. And she is relaunching one of her most uh, sought-after fragrances. And every bit of the profits from that is coming back to the project. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot of people are jumping on board, but it's a freaking it's a great idea. It's a great cause, number one, and it's going to raise awareness like a motherfucker. It is going to be amazing. I cannot tell you how fucking proud of you. I honestly am like it's amazing to me. I can tell you this much. I, I just recently spoke to a veteran, a homeless veteran through Facebook. Um, and the only reason I found him was because his GoFundMe popped up and yeah. So I messaged him, told him what my what we were doing, and he, I was sitting there talking to the guy, and he was like, "You know, the bad thing about this is," I was like, "What?" He goes, "I was actually sleeping on the VA's property." He goes, "I was there. It was somewhere nice to sleep. I was yeah. secure." And he said, "One morning, the VA police walked up to me, kicked me off the property." How the fuck can they do that? Told they- him to leave. So now he is sleeping inside his car at random spots where he can stop. Wow. He lost his job. He's lost everything. His wife left him. He lost his kids. So this guy is just... But how... I mean, just because he's not a drug addict or anything, the right. VA could not help him. They kicked him off the property. It's ridiculous to me, man. So Now, are you putting out there where you're going to be going? Or... I mean, I don't. I know you don't want necessarily people showing up while you're doing this, but oh, I've already, I've already made it all public. Oh, I wasn't oh. sure if you did or not. I mean, you told me some of where you were going, but yeah, I didn't know if well, you were putting this, that out there or not. This week, we're actually going through and revising um, some of the stops because I got to sit down. At, uh, Connor Hopkins is going with me, um, so he's crazy enough to jump on this project and help me out. But uh, so <laughs> we're, we're actually I got to sit down and talk with him. He said he wanted to run some things by me, but I think we're going to mix a couple of these locations just for the fact that like going from Kansas City to Seattle and then Seattle all the way down. We're trying to conserve time. So, oh, that makes sense. I get you. But I am actually starting in Kansas City, going all the way out to California, California, all the way through the south up into Washington, D.C., up into New York, Pennsylvania, and then coming back through to Kansas City. And we're actually, right now, we're going to be ending the trip off in St. Louis. And we are in the talks right now with Nestle Quick about providing enough to feed 1,500 homeless veterans. And we're all going to invite them there for a Thanksgiving dinner. And it's going to be a huge thing around there. And when do you guys kick this shit off? When is November, correct? November 1? Yep, I'm leaving my house November 1st, heading to Kansas City to pick up the van. Nice. And then it's off to Cali. That'll be fun, man. So. Yeah, I'm thinking I might be able to uh, get a group of local businesses here together. And maybe when you come back through, they'll give me enough time to get a good-sized donation put together. Yeah, we. Uh, I had Operation, operation Supply Drop. They've already said that they will uh, assist one to two of the veterans that we meet with uh, finding them uh, housing and um, 
jobs and all this stuff and we'll help them so that's huge that's two people i'm going to drag off the streets so yeah shit man that's huge that's freaking outstanding i wish you the best of luck brother i really do it's gonna be crazy i just can't wait to talk to you more about it you know what i'm saying like my wife is a combat vet and all that shit so i mean here in the next like what week and a half or whatever when we're hanging out it'll be fun just to to talk with you more about it it'll be fun mm-hmm. now, now there's a lot of stuff in the works you said you'll probably put um ramblings on hold yes but do you think that maybe if you have a connection at times and you're not in the middle of something that we could pull you in for an episode half of an episode 10 minutes for an update while you're on the road yeah i i, I just can't guarantee anything right now Yeah, i understand because that. we're literally only staying in each spot for two to three days yeah, yeah, no, I completely get that. But if, if we're able to somehow, I would love to get you yeah. on on the road. So. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be keep we're, people are gonna be updated through the whole thing. Um, what I'm what I want to do is I want to bring somebody on as a full time photographer, somebody that can just have a camera and can catch right. all the photos, so we can update Instagram and Twitter and uh, the Warrior Humanity Project Facebook page. Um, and all this stuff. So, that's a good idea, though. Are you taking apli- are you taking considerations for that? Is that something our listeners can put in for? Yeah, they can contact me if they're crazy enough to do it and they're trustworthy. Because um, right now, I know I was talking to Connor. We do want to have somebody that's dedicated to photography and sound. Yeah, for sure. So, because we don't want to have the wheezing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm sensing uh, that's an inside joke between uh, the two. <laughs> an inside joke of an inside joke because I am not in on it. Uh, yeah, I had a cold during a Brush with Evil two, and there was a couple a couple scenes in there where it sounded like he was wheezing a little bit. It that sounded like I was dying. <laughs> so for Rick to like see the vid- like to see the film like in Kansas City when we were screening in Kansas City and Rick was there. He was hearing it, and it was like to him, it was like fucking nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is, like nobody else has really commented on it at all. <laughs> it's just been Rick, but we took care of it, though. We got rid of it. I sat got, down and took it all out. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Me being a filmmaker, it's I just it's ingrained yeah. in my mind now that <laughs> damn Iowa harvest season. That was funny, man. <laughs> so funny. Oh, so you my. got that. You got the thing next week at Rhodes Hotel, and you have the whole month of uh, November and probably more with your project there. What else do you got? You got anything else you want to talk about? That, uh, I'm trying to think into 2017. I got to pull my calendar off for this crap. <laughs> uh, no, oh, I'm, I just got appearances on radio shows. Um, I'm on David Glidden's show. Yeah, yeah. October 23rd, Warrior Humanity Project is going all the way through. And there's, yeah, I didn't even know. I, I'm just not realizing Veterans Day is in November. So, right, right. They're, we're expecting. See, the thing is, we're expecting backlash because it's during the election season. You guys think you're going to get some backlash for this shit? I if, yeah. Because yeah. we're basically we're basically calling out the VA. So, and I don't know if you've seen the recent news stories, the Chicago VA. No, where I the haven't. Veterans' bodies were left to decompose what in the, the morgue, f- and it wasn't like one or two of them. There was like hundreds of them. What the fuck, man? They're just down there decomposing for months on end. <sighs> so, I don't get that. The stuff can, it just can't even do it needs that. To change. It does. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, how the fuck can you even do that? This isn't the 1800s. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fuck. I don't understand how they could even legally get away with that shit. That was in Chicago. Yep. Fuck. I don't know if they're... Are they getting away with it? Or is there... It was brought to light. I I don't know. I haven't read any updates on it. Yeah. Um, the guy, the, the, they're calling for the guy to be fired, but I think he should be charged. Oh, absolutely. Just, that's, that's just me. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Wow. I don't get it. But yeah, that's really all that's going on that we have planned right now. Uh, I know I've been in talks with some people about going down to film in Nashville, Tennessee, but I haven't heard anything back from that yet. Yeah. So. It's freaking crazy, though. Now, as far as like the process of going to like these cities and stuff, who are you reaching out to as far as, I mean, are you just basically going to go pick a spot and, you know, obviously you're going to have to talk to these people first and make sure yeah. they are in fact veterans and all that. But then what, ask their permission if you can film and yeah, we're going to sign waivers and everything. Are yeah. you going to, how are you going to verify that they're veterans? I mean, I, I, I. Can, I can understand that you might be able to tell personally, but there if may be anybody, somebody if, trying if, to pretend to be a veteran. I'm not. The, I, they're out there. I'm sure they are. Yeah, they, they are out there. Um, we're we're gonna have so many. We're I'm expecting so many from each state. I want to find one to two from each yeah. that we can talk to, and what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll find ways to look them up. And I've got contacts that have contacts. That's about as far as I can go with that. So, <laughs> I was going to say, if anybody could figure out if it was bullshit or not, though, Rick would be the guy. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. I only did counter intel for nine years. So. That's my point. <laughs> like, so. <laughs> I was scared about what buddy on uh, Facebook. He was like, you can't find anything on me. And I sent him a screenshot of his whole employee record. And it's like photos from back in like the early 90s. And I was like, that was only five minutes. <laughs> so have you, have you looked us up? What have you found on Josh? Oh, Just I don't little, even want to talk about that. Little dick pics and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, some backdoor whore or something. I don't know. Hey, that look, I was young and needed the money, Rick. God damn it. <laughs> $20 was $20. <laughs> That's right. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my goodness. <coughs> but I also, you know, I I did this on the last show I was on. I don't know if Samantha's still listening, but my thoughts and prayers are with her family. Her dad found out he had cancer, so oh, shit. she's still she's on all, Twitch according to the app. So I think she's still there. So my thoughts and prayers are with her. She's awesome. We actually, I think I took her into her first haunted place down in Post on Elementary. And she got hooked. So nice. What was that She's noise? Awesome. I heard it too. Did, uh, I, no idea. I just I heard, heard like a moaning sexual noise. I heard it like three times. I'm just saying, sorry, hand check. <laughs> hand check. <laughs> you guys can't see me, but the Twitchers can. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, it's it's gonna be quite the experience. It's it's gonna be life changing for me. So I guarantee that. What what dates are you going to be in Kansas City? We are starting and ending it right now. So I know for a fact, November 1st, I'm picking up the vehicle. And then I don't know when we're ending it, but I might be doing some things in Kansas City at the end of it because that's when I can stop there and do a couple of things and not have to worry about time. Yeah. Yeah, not be so pressed for time. That'll be great. Because as of right now, we are... I am slated to start in Kansas City November 1st and end there December 15th. But we're trying to take some of these dates off. So. Oh, I got you. Well, so, I'm going to work with Big Rip and a few other companies in town and see if we can't at least get a donation, if not something else, for your travel back through or your way back through something. If they need press release, let me know. I've got one made up. So. Oh yeah, we can talk about that whenever I figure yeah. out what what we're gonna do. So, uh, what what time are we at, Josh? Uh, we are right at the uh, pretty much the hour mark. So what what paranormal news? This is actually our paranormal news episode. What paranormal <laughs> news have you heard recently, Rick? Oh me, oh Let's, man. Actually, um, I want to hear your take on Ryan Buell. I would got love what he deserved. We haven't I actually just, talked about it on the show yet. Oh, yeah. We haven't talked about it yet. That's the easiest way to put it. I mean, the guy was scamming people for money, saying he was going to do things, and never follow through with the events. Didn't deliver. Was, say, was saying he had pancreatic cancer when he never did. Yeah. So. 
you look at it, the dude's on drugs. Yeah. He does look it. At least in the... I know people don't necessarily look their best in a mug shot, but he definitely <laughs> looks on something. Yeah. The, the thing is, too, the thing that irritated me at first was I've seen posts from people that were like, um, he's only texted me once, but I know what's going on. It's like all these people are... They're, they're trying to jump on the bandwagon to further their name because he had a name. Right. Yeah, I saw a bunch of defensive posts from yeah. people that I didn't even ne- I didn't necessarily know, but I don't think they knew. I didn't know Ryan. I don't even know anybody. Well, I, actually, that's not true. I do know somebody that was affiliated with them now, but everybody loves to jump on the bandwagon or something. Get their yeah. name out there a little bit. Exactly. So, I didn't really post anything about it. I've seen... I seen funny posts like uh, Scott Tepperman posted overnight investigation at the jail cell with Ryan Buell <laughs> <laughs> with special appearances, and he had like the gang's names in the jails. <laughs> so bloods in the cribs. I was like, uh, man, I'm going to hell for laughing at this one. But <laughs> well, when I understand people could be estranged from their family, but when his mom comes out and says what she did, yeah. It's pretty much the last nail in the coffin as far as any reasonable people, I yep. would think. Yes. Fuck yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. But it is another blow to our community as a whole. I think so, too. Um, but I think that problem has been there. I think there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they promise X, Y, and Z or whatever, but they're they're not delivering um, and that I think is a common problem um, in the paranormal community. Rick, I know like you and I had a deal going over the summer uh, where a lot of shit fell through and I mean, shit went south really, really quick. I mean, it's things like that. I mean, people are getting burned left and right here. Um, and I think it's a big problem that needs to be that needs to be addressed, needs to be taken care of for sure. Yeah, that's. I mean, if you're going to say you're going to do something, do it. Exactly. That's just it. Yeah. I don't even think I heard about this. You heard about it. Maybe. You did. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, speaking of projects, are you wanting in on the scaring Josh into getting abducted? I think he should be. I'm all for it. Because we're waiting. Uh, uh, For people, the GoFundMe was a while ago, and... You know, we raised whatever for that, and and we've been talking about it for a while now. Just so our listeners know, we're waiting until A Brush With Evil is done with touring before we start on the next project, which we still want to do, Get Josh Hurt Abducted. So that's still in the works. I don't want, I don't want people to think we've forgotten about it. That'll happen. It'll happen. But I figured Rick would probably want in on it. Not not in the sense of wanting in on something, just because he wants to scare the shit out of you. I want to see it happen. I right, I think that's <laughs> a total bonus, though, right there. <laughs> uh, watch me mess my pants. That'll be great. Be fun. You could film me duking my pants. It'll be great. Three Let's dudes get the shot. out in the woods, <laughs> Josh dressed in tinfoil. <laughs> I have all kinds of ideas of how to attract aliens. Oh fuck! I man. Actually, I did a live video not too long ago where I put a tinfoil hat on. <laughs> I was sit on live video with a tinfoil hat. It was funny. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Nobody is ever gonna fucking take us seriously though if that shit happens. If, if our show oh. is funny, and I know we got to treat this. With humor too, I think this particular one. Anyways, maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe. As lo- I think I, you know, for me, honestly, we don't have to talk about it too much. But for me, the interviews is going to be the serious part. And yeah, we're going to seriously try to go out to these locations and try to get you abducted. But I think that the humor in that part will be great. <laughs> so, this, yeah. Actually, the David from Sofa King podcast. He has an implant in his leg. 
Huh? He doesn't have an induction experience that he can remember, but he has an implant in his leg that he's tried to get removed, and whenever the doctor touches it, it makes him physically ill. What? Yeah. So he wants... he want, I, I asked him if he would be interested in working on the project or being interviewed for it, so we'll see what happens with that with him, but yeah. I think we should... Uh get all of our para buddies together and do this shit yeah so last night i was going through uh hollow weekends at cedar point it's all the haunted houses and the, yeah, the frame that. zones and everything yeah it's pretty fun but they, we had to like pay extra to get into these skeleton key rooms and the one was like you were down in new orleans and this guy's in overalls and he's asking to try his moonshine but it, he said it was actually piss because I, <laughs> I like i took a swig of it and i was like what the hell is that it was like Real nasty tasting. And he's oh. like, oh, when you go outside that bucket, please refill this. And I was like, what are you talking about? But he's like, but we got to go into this other room because I got a story to tell everybody. And as we're walking through, he's like, ever since my aunt, my aunt Edna died, we've been hearing weird noises in here. And I was like, you got the guy in here. I'm a paranormal investigator. So we walk into this room and it's like all teddy bears. And I'm like, fuck this. Yeah. I, I just, I don't, I don't do teddy bears. So I'm like searching around the room. I'm like, all right, which one's going to pop out? Which one's going to yeah. jump? Yeah. And in this big tile, pile of teddy bears behind me was this huge like rabbit uh, mask, like the evil rabbit with the, like, the gnarly teeth and everything. Oh. And I turned around and when I made eye contact with it, I seen it kind of just sway back and forth. And I was like, uh-uh, nope, that motherfucker's going to jump. And the guy was <laughs> mad at me. He's like stomping his cane. He's like, pay attention to me. And I'm like, uh-uh, no, this guy's going to jump behind me. I'm not going to be having it. So, <laughs> Oh, my God. But you had to go through and you had to read, like, these lullabies, these nursery rhymes. And at the end, it was, like, a key word. And he, like, slammed his cane on the ground. And that big old freaking rabbit come out of the floor and everything. Oh. I almost put myself. <laughs> I would have, too. I would have shat all over the place. Ugh. That'd be fun, though. So, Rick, what do you think of the creepy clowns? We talked about it on the show before we had... You You were listening. Yeah. Um, uh, I haven't seen any positive proof that they do exist. I think it's just a Facebook hoax where people are posting photos saying they see them. Sure. Um, but I know for a fact it's taking steam because last night we were actually waiting to get into one of the haunted houses and there was a guy in line that was in front of us and his face was painted up like a clown and they wouldn't let him inside the haunted house. What they the turned fuck? around and said you can't go in. Why? I don't know. That's weird, man. Uh, I mentioned there was one here in the metro, and it, it was on the news, and it was in Leavenworth. It was in Lansing or Leavenworth, somewhere up there in that area. And see, that's I I'd, I'd heard about that on K seven. Yeah. Driving towards the legends. Um, but I don't know. Those the photos are just. I think it's people trying to scare people. Yeah. Yeah, that was my take on it too. It was, I think it may have started with it, with the marketing for it, but I think it's people just having fun. I mean, one shot now and another one's arrested, which I'm surprised it took that long for one to get shot. That's a good point. Yeah, apparently this guy unloaded a shit ton of bullets into this guy. (laughs) (laughs) And I mean, if something like that does happen, do do you charge the guy? I don't know. It's, you're in a sticky situation because the cops are talking yeah. about it. There was that instance a few <laughs> years ago of the guy on the side of the highway in Texas dressed as Bigfoot that got shot. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if they charged yeah. the guy that shot him or not. Well, all I got to say is clown lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> If a clown walks in here right now, this moment, the, that clown life does not matter as much as my life. <laughs> clown lives matter. <laughs> but I, I'm serious. I've seen on the news today, there's this woman that runs this clown business here in Sandusky, Ohio. And she was on the news complaining about <coughs> how it's ruined her business. What? <laughs> She's I think like, it would only I've, bring attention to her business. Nope. She says right. she's had to cancel all of her events until this kind of goes out of the limelight because people are so afraid of clowns. Holy and she's she's shit. afraid for her life. And she's this, like, and I'm a good clown. <laughs> so this is why I think it's for it. This It's got to be. 
I mean, it's not, it's a, it's not uh-huh. a coincidence to me that just a few weeks ago is when the image of the new clown from It came out, and now this. That's very true. Which, by the way, did you guys see the fucking images of that clown? Yeah, my daughter doesn't even want to talk about it. I yeah, tried to bring that. it up. And no, fuck it. I didn't try to bring up the movie. I was like, some people are... I just I didn't even like pretext it with anything. I picked her up from school. That fucking prick. What is he doing? I don't know. He's going, he he just fucking got up. He's probably got a clown mask. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. yeah. Motherfucker. Clowns don't scare oh me. God. Fuck. Uh, I, I'm Rick. not I'm not afraid Stuart. of clowns. <laughs> a creepy clown in the woods would probably get a reaction from me. Uh, not a good one but clowns don't necessarily scare me but what i was like i didn't pretext this conversation with my daughter at all i picked her up from school was bringing her to her mom's house halfway there i just started to say so some people have been seeing some weird clowns around the and she said stop (laughs) and she didn't want any to talk anymore (laughs) so Uh she's so freaked out um (laughs) <laughs> She's not without cause, though, because I try to spook her a little bit from time to time. Like when my buddy bought a little ventriloquist doll, I was sending her pictures of the doll and stuff. And yeah, so. I Fuck that. <laughs> I know you're afraid of dolls. I fucking hate dolls. What are you doing over there? Are you talking to me? Yeah. I was checking my. Uh my phone. I was trying to get the Twitch thing up, but it wasn't working for me. How's that big rip beer treating you? The big rip is gone, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> so, Josh, what you're saying is you can't get it up? I cannot. I couldn't get my Twitch up. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. And on that happy little note, I think I'm going to close out the show. Uh, Rick, tell everybody again where they can uh, where they can find your stuff. <laughs> Excuse me, and where they can uh, help uh, help donate to this project and everything. You go to Warrior Humanity Project on Facebook, uh, Warrior Humanity Project Instagram, Twitter. Um, I think the names for all social media. Or you can go to RichardRoseFilms.com and hit the donate button, and then there's a PayPal link in there. Shit, yeah, dude. Cool, cool. And hey, like we said, we're going to be doing more uh, more updates on this as it progresses as well. So keep you guys all in the loop so but rick thanks so much buddy for joining us too oh thank you let me see i think you should uh reach out to uh five finger death punch and see if they want to do something for this because almost all of their videos have something to do with the homeless or veterans and veterans problems yeah just hard getting a hold of the bands oh i'm sure (laughs) yeah yeah Fuck yeah. All right, boys. I'm going to uh, close out the show. Everybody have a good rest of the week. And we'll talk to you all very soon. Peace out. Cub Scout. <laughs> all right. I want to thank everybody that's watching Twitter. I know you're not recording. Twitter. I'm Twitch. I know you're not still recording. but, but Twitch We're not on the Twitter anymore. <laughs> we're still up on Twitch at the moment. I'm going to take us down. I just wanted to thank everybody that's watching us right now. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, Samantha.